And so maybe that's a revival. I don't know. We just thank you, Father, how blessed we are and how thankful we are, Lord God. I pray, too, for our family, friends, co-workers, neighbors, even some of our enemies. We pray even for government officials that none of them will perish in hell. And God, we pray that you would use them and appoint them that they do the work that they're supposed to do with their government officials. But we pray too for those who are heavily on our hearts that you would touch them. We're not judging anybody, Lord. We're just lifting them up to you. Lift them up quietly in your hearts. People you've been praying for. Father, we thank you, oh God. We thank you especially for those who are sick in our church, Lord, that you would heal them in the cellars. Oh God, Mr. Baker, Miss Baker. Father, we pray for those who are not here, and we pray for those who are here, Ms. Ms. Williams, and we pray, Father, oh God, that you would touch them and heal them all. Oh God, I pray in Jesus' name that no man is exalted. Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We also had men and women's meeting again. Uh, we kind of got it on the right keel now. We had seven apiece or more. And uh, we're just grateful to God that that was some good fellowship. So we're going to do that once a month and uh, get back to that. Uh, that is something that, gl that it glorifies God and strengthens us all. So pray for that ministry because it's an opportunity to bond together outside of the formal church. Just like our fellowship next Monday. It's just to have fun together. Hallelujah. You know, in the men's meeting, we had some bulls in that meeting. Uh, the rest of us just sat and watched. Let's just put it that way. I'm not going to call no names, but it was Mr. Taylor and Kenny. Oh, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Did that just slip out? Thank you, buddy. I like your Caribbean shirt. Go ahead. Hello. And Gina said, that is not a Caribbean shirt. That's not Nigeria. And he brought it for you from Nigeria. All right. Well, at least they got the right countries. Okay? All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, I'm so grateful to get an opportunity to just kind of briefly go through this message. We had a baptism, but it's rescheduled for Sunday. Uh, Y'all pray for Casey. And I, I just want you to just kind of understand a few things about the gospel. Right now, I want you to know that the tree of life that God told us to eat from gave us life, right? But we decided to eat from another tree. I say we, you know, Adam. And we've been doing it ever since. And I've been thinking about that. I say, you know, why did God let all of us sink because of that? Well, God's words is what give us life, believe it or not. He spoke everything into existence by his word. So our life comes from the word of God. Mm -hmm. So when we start listening to something else other than the life that is in his word, and we went over to the other tree, and then Satan was teaching us, giving us the wrong words, words that lead to death. The Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue, yes. Proverbs 18. But I want you to know something. Man fell because he listened to the words of death and not the words of life. His heart fell. His heart became sinful. It was dead in its sins. So what we know is that the words of God bring life. And out of our heart, that is where life will come from. The Bible says out of the heart comes the issues of life. So something has to change in me and you so that our heart is no longer dead in sin but becomes alive in Christ. And that something has to be the word of God. It changed me with an instant. Being a little Catholic boy. <laughs> I say little Catholic boy. I was an old Catholic boy and I changed. And just to say this. When I was in this place, I finally heard a word that was with power in my church. At a retreat. And the word got in my heart and I have never been the same since. And that's what the word is supposed to do. When I get up here and preach, it blessed me so much with the men to know when we discuss revival that you know it's about the words that enter your heart whether they revive you and change you. Isn't that right? Yeah. It's not about you staying the same. It's about words of life entering you. You turn with me to Matthew 15. Oh boy. And listen. Out of the heart. That's the name of the message. Out of the heart. 
You know, when you look at TV and people are pretending, it's a world full of pretenders, isn't it? They're not speaking out of their hearts. They're speaking out of their minds. But their words, by their words, you will know them. You will know them by how they speak. Isn't that right? So today I want you to know you need to covet the words of life. Because out of your heart, life can come forward for your children, your future, your prosperity, for your, for your nation, for all things. If you begin to understand the word of God, get it deep down in your heart. It's not enough to speak from your mind. You must speak from your heart. But if your heart hasn't changed, your words won't change either. They're just not going to change. I like the discipline of silence, but sooner or later you're going to have to speak so people can know what you're really made of. Because it's by, the, by your words, the Lord said, that's how you will know them, by how they speak. Today, you guard your heart, and you look into your own heart. Stop judging whether somebody think you this or you did this wrong. Hey, look, I want you to know some very famous people who's, who did some bad things. They did. Some really bad things. Isn't that right? Yes. But yet God says he's a man after my own heart. Mm -hmm. God knows a man's heart. Yes, he does. Mm -hmm. He's yep. not judging you by your actions. Yes. Yep. He's not judging you by your robes you wear and how much money you have and how you look. No. God's looking at your heart. And guess who else knows your heart? Thank you. you know it. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. And when you speak, Others will hear the sound of your heart. Sometimes we just use our mind religiously, and the man of the heart will know if you're speaking from the mind. But today I want you to know that God has a plan for man. He wants his heart to totally change. But he first has to establish the wickedness of our hearts. And in Matthew 15, verse 1, it says, then some Pharisees and teachers of the law came to Jesus from Jerusalem and asked, Why do your disciples speak the tradition of the elders? Remember that word. Break the tradition of the elders. They don't wash their hands before they eat. Now you know that ain't got nothing to do with talking, is it? Washing your hands. And why do you break the command of God for the sake of your tradition? For God said, Honor your father and mother. And anyone who curses his father or mother must be put to death. But you say, you say, you notice that? That if a man says to his father or mother, whatever help you might otherwise have received from me is a gift devoted to God. He is not to honor his father with it. Thus you nullify the word of God for the sake of your tradition. You hypocrites, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are but rules taught by men. Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen and understand. What goes into a man's mouth does not make him unclean, but what comes out of his mouth, that is what makes him unclean. Then the disciples came to him and asked, Do you know what the Pharisees, that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this? He replied, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be pulled up by the roots. Leave them. They are blind guides. If a blind man leads a blind man, both will fall into a pit. Peter said, explain the parable to us. Are you still so dull, Jesus asked. Don't you see that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and then out of the body? But the things that come out of the mouth from the heart you see that? Mm -hmm. And these make a man unclean. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander. These are what make a man unclean. But eating with unwashed hands does not make him unclean. Now you and I have been taught a lot about what we do as, as a way to measure whether we are saved or not. Whether I go to church, you know how many wicked people go to church? Mm -hmm. yes, oh, yes. I got some men who tell you about it. And they'll tell you about some wicked preachers in the church. Mm -hmm. Listen, your outward appearance does not make you saved. And if you're judging the church by other people's outward appearance, and so you say, well, I ain't going to church because they're a bunch of crooks, they're a bunch of this and that, you're judging by the wrong thing. You need to look in your own heart. And you need to judge yourself by the word of God. 
Because the Lord doesn't want anything judged before his time. Right. Come on, sir. Kenny was in the meeting and more than five times I heard him say, out of the heart. I said, that man must know my message for today. Because the heart is what it's all about. Yeah. The heart. You always worry about what people say about you, what mom and daddy think about you, and all this kind of stuff. The question is, what is your heart like? Mm, yes. And you say, how do I know? When you speak from your heart, what do you say? Yes. Does cursing and blessing come out of the same heart? Can't. Can you keep speaking death in people's lives and controversy and confusion in people's lives? And can you keep on explaining yourself over and over again? Justifying yourself rather than speaking from your heart. My Lord. Today I want you to know that God judges every man by his heart. Yes. Yes. That's why David could have sent a man to, be, to death and didn't take his wife. He got punished for it. But God saves a man after his own heart. Yes. Your sins and your actions don't make you evil. It's your heart that makes you evil. Amen. Yep. Yep. I've seen some of the, the most, the worst sin for people have the best hearts. You say, now this preacher going too far. Is he saying it's okay to say no? I'm telling you that you better leave the judgment of a person to God. Because yes. you don't know their hearts. Amen. Because yes. yes. God ain't judging by their actions. That's you. Yep. But God is watchful for what comes out of your mouth that came from your heart. Because yeah. if you're still in a fallen state where Satan has taught you the words of life, you know, I, I look at the young ladies from the islands and, and I'm, I'm, I'm amazed at how intelligent and how, how, how skillful and and how disciplined they are compared to some of us. You know, we're listening to rap music all the time. I ain't saying they don't. We're looking at bad stuff on TV all the time. We don't even socialize with each other. We don't have a community of people that like to talk to each other. Yes, sir. We're in our own little world, listening to our own little words. And we begin to live by them. I was telling my wife this morning, you cannot tell some people anything. You can't speak a word to them. They know everything. I was always taught to have a teachable spirit. I've learned so much from just men in our church, friends of mine. Each one of them. You know, my children have taught me things. You gotta have a teachable heart. Things and times change, but the words stay the same. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. To me and you, it's that word that has to get down in there, isn't it? You turn with me to, uh, I don't forget. No, I tell you what, for the sake of time, you can turn to Proverbs 16, but I want to read some Proverbs, Psalm 44 very right quick. Would not God have discovered it since he knows the secrets of the heart? God knows the secrets of the heart. You know, you sit here saying, well, I don't need to tell nobody. Well, you know, you don't have to tell God nothing. He knows the secrets of your heart. Yes. 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 yes, he does. So what is it? You know, you say, well, so-and-so got me wrong. They're talking bad about me. They're accusing me. Oh, look, I've been through it all, haven't I? Mm -hmm. But the question is, the Lord knows your heart. Yes, yes. Come on, Jesus. Thank you, 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 Father. Right. You know, that's what makes me look a little rebellious to some people because I don't feel like i got to explain myself to everybody. Amen. God yes. knows my yes. heart. Hallelujah. Come on, sir. Yes. When you get out here and you got to tell people and explain to people, you know, who you really are. Come on. You know, I've been in that trap before. I hate it. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to look up to the hills from which come with your help. You need yes. to say, God, you know me. I know these people have accused me, yes. said bad things about me. Yes. I, I, but, I, I, but I got the good news in my heart. Thank yes. you, Father. Yes, Lord. Yes. And your word is a lamp unto my feet yes. and a light unto my path. Yes. Yes. It is your word that really discerns for me what kind of man I really am. Yes. Awesome. yes. Man can't be my judge. That's come right. On. God's my judge. Yes, he is. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hey, look, if you don't get it, you ain't going to understand your salvation, even if you get it, if you have it. Proverbs 16 now. Thank you, Lord. Oh, boy. Look. Proverbs 16. 
Look, that's why people are not in church today. They think it's about church, that outward thing. They don't know it's about the hearts. I go to church because I love God. Yes. You come to church, hopefully, because you want to hear the word and love God, fellowship with believers. But if you come into church because you think it's going to save you, <laughs> you are mistaken. There are going to be many church members in hell. I'm not judging them, but the Bible says that road is narrow. So if you're in a church and you're sitting there saying all these devils are in the same church with me, I'd rather go to a church like ours where people say all them sinners are in the church. Mm. Yeah, I love that church. Mm -hmm. It's that church that don't think they got no sinners. That's right. Uh, yep. That got problems. Yes. <laughs> if the preacher know he was a sinner, then you got a good church. Hallelujah. And surely I can tell you, you know, I've been up here many times to tell you how sinful I was. Yes, sir. Now, do you need me to go through that again? Isn't that a drag? Mm -hmm. My mama hear these tapes, and she's just going to be so upset. <laughs> hey, look, what? <laughs> Proverbs 16. And she's probably going to hear them one day. Leon is faithful. Make sure you put him up there. <laughs> hey, look, verse 1 of chapter 16. To man belong the plans of the heart, yes. but from the Lord comes the reply of the tongue. All a man's ways seem innocent to him, but motives are weighed by the Lord. Mm -hmm. Make you a little uncomfortable, huh? Mm -hmm. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and your plans will succeed. The Lord works out everything for his own ends, yes. even the wicked for a day of disaster. Mm -hmm. The Lord detests all the proud of heart. Yes. Be sure of this, they will not go unpunished. Through love and faithfulness, sin is atoned for. Through the fear of the Lord, a man avoids evil. When a man's ways are pleasing to the Lord, he makes even his enemies live at peace with him. Better a little with righteousness than much gain with injustice. Mm -hmm. In verse 9, in his heart a man plans his course. But the Lord determines his steps. Yes. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. God's looking at everything from your heart. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. People that say, you want prosperity? Just keep speaking it. Mm -hmm. Well, the motive of your prosperity. Just keep speaking. I I, I command. I bring my tithe to the church. Oh, God going to open the windows of heaven for me. And pour out a blessing to me. It's for what? What's the motive of your heart for bringing it? God ain't living. God gonna need your cash. That's right. But the church does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, what's the motive of your giving? Mm -hmm. He's looking at the heart. Amen. You can give a penny, but what's the heart like? Yes. Why did you give it? What do you expect? Yes. Is it because it's religious to give? Oh, I got to be a giver. I got to be. I'm a tither. You a tither. Is that a fact? Mm -hmm. Does that make you more than a non-tither? Mm -hmm. Nope. Come on, Jesus. Does that mean your heart is better than a non-tither? No. Nope. Nope. We got some crazy teachings in the church. Mm -hmm. It's about your motive. Hallelujah. Why do you tithe? Why do you give? Who are you giving to? That's what God's doing. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm, listen, you got to understand something. It's all about the heart of God. You can fool people, but you can't fool God. Amen. Eventually, your wicked heart, God will begin to direct your steps in your wickedness. Yes. Mm -hmm. While you're holding back what you really feel in your heart, but you keep thinking it and rehearsing evil in your head, God knows your heart is wicked. And then he's going to lead you toward wickedness. Your steps are not going where you want to go. Because you want to look like everything's going well for you. But you're living in a lie. Mm -hmm. You understand? God knows a man's heart. Amen. And the Lord determines a man's steps. He determines a man's step. If you repent like David. If you turn from your wicked ways. Come on, Jesus. The Lord knows that he can do something with a heart like that. Hallelujah. Yes. He can yes. do something with a heart that says, you know what, I'm eating from the wrong tree. Yes. I've been learning the wrong things. 
I've been hearing the wrong words. I've been living the wrong life. Hey, you could be 99.5, and the Lord said, okay, I use a heart like that. Yes, sir. One that can bend a little. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. One that knows his outward appearance is no longer justifies him at all. Come on. Naming what my religion is, and when I got baptized, don't justify me. That's right. It's by the words. You should know them. Yes. Hey, look, yes. if, if you go with me to... Uh, Let's go to Matthew 12. Amen. See, something's going to push out of your mouth what your heart really is. Right? Yeah. Sooner or later, your mouth will speak something. You can hold it in for so long. Mm -hmm. so long. Yes, sir. Listen, people, I know what I'm talking about because I had a dad. When mm -hmm. he were here to say something, it might come out. Oh, oh. You'd be ready to run. Mm -hmm. But you see, out of the overflow of that heart of yours, it's going to overflow one day. You got an angry spirit, it's going to push out some angry words. You can hold that anger down for a little while. But sooner or later, it's going to overflow. Awesome. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. You ever seen a potty overflow? <laughs> I'm sorry. It's going to overflow if you get stopped up, you know what I mean? Yes, sir. If that heart of yours overflows, then somebody around you gonna say, oh, so that's what you really think of me. You see? See, because the heart, that's where it's gonna come out of. You know how some people look at people and they say, you know what? I think that's a nice person. You know, I have some children just as stupid, just like their dad, I wish they weren't. But they think everybody nice. I just learned the hard way. Everybody ain't nice. Nope. And it's when they open their mouth and say what they really think of you, you go, what? <laughs> Whoa, hello. <laughs> See, sooner or later, something's going to push it out. Say, something's going to push it out. <laughs> if it's love in your heart for me, yes. it's going to come out. Yes. Yes, sir. I saw Jimmy kiss Mark yesterday, and I thought I could never separate him. <laughs> Golly. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that. They told me don't embarrass me. I didn't mean to do that. Out of the abundance of the heart. So when I get up here, you don't know what to say. Ah. All right. But it was a beautiful thing. So. Okay. Hello. First. Shut up, <laughs> Verse 33 of Matthew 12. Make a tree good and its fruit will be good. Or make a tree bad and its fruit will be bad. For a tree is recognized by its fruit. You brood of vipers, how can you who are evil say anything good? For out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. The good man speaks good things out of the good stored up in him, and the evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in him. You know the word stored up? Sooner or later it gets full. It overflows. Say it overflows. It, it gets stopped up. Yes. And if it's bad, it's going to be bad when you speak. That's why you don't say nothing. You're trying to hold it down. But it ain't going to hold down long. Sooner or later, say sooner or later, it's going to come out your mouth. And some people here say, mm -hmm, you did that to me before. <laughs> okay. That's the good news. I try to say it's good out of my heart. But if it's something you think wrong about people, you're going to say the wrong thing out of your heart. So it's good to watch your mind, huh? And what gets in your heart. You know? He said, but I tell you that men will have, a, have, verse 36, to give account on the day of judgment for every careless word they have spoken. For by your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. That's clear enough. Yes. So if I was you, I'd measure myself by what I say, not by what somebody else says. Yeah, yes. Because what I say out of my heart tells me who I am. Yes. I'm not defined by what you think of me. I'm defined by what comes out of my heart about yeah. me. You can tell if a person is humble by the words they speak. You can tell if they're prideful by how they speak. 
you see, because sooner or later they're going to speak what's in their hearts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, look, but that's genuine people. There are some like the Pharisees who would just outwardly be one way. And, and the Lord had to explain to them that's not what it's about. Romans 2. Okay. You know, we don't have continuation of messages. I'm doing it all today. So, I don't tell you I'm going to give you part 2 next Sunday and drag it on. <laughs> you might not come to church next Sunday. You might be in Dallas. <laughs> this. So scripture edifies scripture, right? Romans 2. The Bible says in verse 26, if those who are not circumcised keep the law's requirements, will they not be regarded as though they were circumcised? The one who is not circumcised physically and yet obeys the law will condemn you who even though you have the written code and circumcision a lawbreaker or a lawbreaker. Y'all see that? A man is not a Jew if he is only one outwardly. That means he's circumcised, so that makes you a Jew. Nor is circumcision merely outward and physical. No, a man is a Jew if he is one inwardly. And circumcision is circumcision of the what? Heart, by the spirit, not by the written code. Such a man's praise is not from men, but from God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if it's your heart that you got, God, it's because your heart has been changed by the Holy Spirit. You're not looking for praise from men. You're looking for praise from God. Jesus. Because men don't know your heart. Yes, yes. But God does. Yes. Thank you. So if you're worried about whether your heart's right, thank you, Jesus. You worry about what God thinks. Yes. Hallelujah. But you worry about what you do outside to impress people. You know, that's not nothing but praise from men. That don't count for nothing. Come on, Jesus. Don't come from that. You can wear that long robe, and you can wear all that stuff you want. You can do your holy water, your ginger flex, and you can do all kind of hopping around and screaming at the pulpit. But you know something? God knows your heart. Hallelujah. Yes. And your outward stuff. You can quote every, every scripture in the Bible. You can quote it from Genesis to Revelation. It doesn't impress God. It's your heart. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do y'all understand what God looks at? Yes. So you don't have no qualm with man. No. No. You don't want man to say, oh, she's such a wonderful person. She just always in church. And, oh, she, uh, and he just, such a wonderful man, takes care of his family. And he just, you know, if, you know, the truth of the matter is you measuring yourself by the praise of men. Come on. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You can't be measuring by the praise of God at the same time. So whose praise are you interested in? This is God. God. Lord. Hebrews 4 says the word of God is like a two-edged sword. Yes. It yes, goes it deeper than, it, than your body. It goes deeper than your soul. It goes down in the very marrow and the bones of your spirit. Yes. That's how deep the word goes. It brings a dead heart alive again. Come on, sir. Hallelujah. 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 And that's how I have to have my heart changed. I have to have it changed by the words of the living God. Christ died on that tree for me. Why? Why did he die on a tree for me? Well, look at that garden scene again. He had to be nailed to a tree to take all your sins upon him so your dead heart can come alive again. Oh, Jesus. He had to stand there because no man's heart could have changed by the written code. Mm -hmm. You can't change by what you do, by what you read, or by the law. You must change by a changed heart. Yes, sir. Change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't change by mom and daddy. Money can't change you. <laughs> but the word of God goes deep. When I receive that, it quickens my heart. It brings up a life again. Yes, sir. It brings it alive again. Because I've been dead in my sins. Justifying everything I did. Not caring what people thought. Yes, sir. Just do what I want to do. Be free. Yes. Mm -hmm. I used to have this mantra, roll with the tide. Roll with the wind. And go straight to hell. That's what I should have. To 
Today I want you to focus on resurrecting your heart. Hallelujah. My brother asked me, Brother Danny, the revival that he has to explain to people. It's a resurrected heart. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Church shouldn't be about a bunch of dead hearts in church. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Church should be about living hearts. Come on, yep. Yep. Church should be quick and alive. Yes. In God, by the word of God. Mm -hmm. So that out of the heart the mouth will speak. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Listen, if you go with me to uh, one more scripture, Romans 10. Verse 6, for the second time. But the righteousness that is by faith says, Do not say in your what? heart, Who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down. Or who will ascend into the deep? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and where? In your heart. That is the word of faith we are proclaiming. That if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe it where? In your heart that God raised him from the dead, you, read it with me, will be saved. For it is with your heart that you, that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. Is that clear to you? Yes. Listen, I want you to know that when Christ died on the cross, he took all your dead stuff and died with it. Mm -hmm. Listen, he took that death in your heart, that sinful life we all have lived. He nailed it to a tree. Yeah. Yes, sir. But on that Sunday morning, he rose up again. Come on, sir. And the power that raises the dead Raises up your old dead heart. Yes. That's what it does. Yes. That's what salvation is. I'm dead in my sins. I'm dead in my heart. I'm living and breathing. But I'm going to hell. I'm going to death. I'm going nowhere. But when I get that word deep down inside of me. When it's spoken. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes. When I understand what he did on that tree that day. When I know that he sucked in all my sins. Yes. Into his body. Hallelujah. He said, if I be lifted up, I draw all men. Not just Catholic, Baptist, Muslim, everybody. I draw all of them to me. Yes. I die for every sin. From every person. From every religion. From every type of nation. Come on, sir. I die for every last one of them. Mm -hmm. I took every sin out of the earth. For me. So all they have to do is receive my word and believe it in their hearts. And I, by the power of my resurrection, will raise them up. And their dead hearts will live. Hallelujah. Do you understand the resurrection? Do you understand the power of the heart? Yes. Do you know your outward appearance ain't gonna change nothing and no life? Nope. No. But my heart. Yep. The Lord knows. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Yes. The Lord knows. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today, I want you to examine your own heart. I want you looking at nobody else's heart. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. And I want you to say, God, am I still in sin? Am I still living like I want to live? Or is my, is my heart still not aware? of the life that is in your word. When you died for my sin, I don't have nothing to do but believe and confess it out of my heart that you were raised from the dead. Yes. And the power of your resurrection will quicken my heart yes. and make me alive again. Yes. Out of my heart will come the issues of life. Yes. Out of the abundance of my heart, I'm going to speak and glorify your name. I didn't do this by my own power. You did it when you died for me. How many of you would say, I can look at my heart and see it's alive now. Yes. Once it was dead. Yes. But if Thank you can't you, see that, Thank I want you, you to come up here and raise your, better yet, you, raise your hand and I send someone to you. Raise your hand. If you say, well, I don't, I don't see that in my heart. I don't see where I've changed. 
Don't be afraid. Just raise your hand. Someone will come to you. 